हरे राम हरे राम राम हरे Oh, 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 oh,
Jai Radha Madhava Punja Bihari Jai Radha 
Ananti Koti Vaishnava Brindakija 
नाम आचार्य शील हरिदास ठाकुर की जाए प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार श्रीवास दी गौर भक्त बृंद की जाए श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपीनाथ श्याम खुंद राधा खुंद कि गोवर्धन की जाए श्री वृंदावन धाम की जाए श्री नवद्वीप मायापुर धाम की जाए श्री जगन्नाथपुरी धाम की जाए श्री द्वारक धाम की जाए श्री मथुरा धाम की जाए गंग मई की जाए यमुना मई की जाए भक्ति देवी की जाए तुलसी देवी की जाए समबेर भक्त वृंद की जाए गौर प्रेमानंदी All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to Sri Guru and Sri Gaurang. <coughs> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Vidyante Vratharo Dhara Vidyante Vratharo Dhara Vithara Surdastata Ekasnigdha Kakinina Sadhyasarverayakrita Vidyante Bhrataro Dhara Vidyante Bhrataro Dhara Hitara Suhradastata Hitara Suhradastata Ekasnigda Kakinina Ekasnigda Kakinina Sadhya Sarve Rayakrita Sadhya Sarve Rayakrita Vidyante Bhrataro Dhara Pitara Suradastata Ekasnigda Kakinina Sadhya Sarve Rayakrita Vidyante Vrata 
Vigilante. They break off. Prataraha. <coughs> the brothers. Dara. Wife. Pitara. Parents. Suhrada. Friends. Tata. And Eka. As if one. Asigna. Very dear. Very dear. Kakinina. Kakinina. By a small coin. By a small coin. Sadhya. Sadhya. Immediately. Immediately. Sarve. Sarve. All of them. All of them. Araya. Araya. Enemies. Enemies. Krita. Krita. Made. Made. Even a man's brothers, wife, parents, and friends, united with him in love, will immediately break off their affectionate relationships and become enemies over a single coin. For even a small amount of money, these relatives and friends become very agitated and their anger is inflamed. Acting as rivals, they quickly give up all sentiments of goodwill and will reject one at a moment's notice, even to the point of committing murder. Those who, obtain, those who obtain human life, which is prayed for even by the demigods, and in that human birth become situated as first-class Brahmins, are extremely fortunate. If they disregard this important opportunity, they are certainly killing their own self-interest and thus achieve a most unfortunate end. Purport. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur comments as follows. Human birth is better than that of the demigods, ghosts, spirits, animals, trees, lifeless stones, and so forth because the demigods simply enjoy celestial pleasures. And in other forms of life, there is excessive suffering. It is only in human life that one deeply considers one's ultimate benefit in life. Human life is therefore more desirable than even that of the demigods. <clears throat> Within human life, the position of a high-class Brahman is certainly most desirable. If a Brahman, however, gives up the devotional service of the Lord and works hard like a Shudra simply for the prestige of his community, he is certainly on the platform of material sense gratification. The special qualification of the Brahmins is the spiritual knowledge by which they recognize every living entity to be an eternal servant of the Lord. A Brahman free from false ego thus feels himself lower than a blade of grass and tolerantly offers respect to all living entities. All human beings, and especially the Brahmins, should avoid becoming killers 
of their own self-interest by neglecting Krishna consciousness, the loving service of the Lord. Such neglect paves the way for future suffering. Timidandasya Gyananjana Chalakaya Chakshuru Militam Yena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Gadamayam Tata Iswa Padantikam Bandeyam Sri Guru Sri Jutha Patakamalam Sri Guru Vaishnavam Scha Sri Rupam Sagrajataham Sahakana Raghunatham Bitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Padijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padaham Sahakana Lalita Sri Vishakan Bitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanshana Gaurangi Radhe Brinda Baneshwari Vrishabhanu Sate Devi Pranamami Adi Priye Bancha Kalpata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhubya Evacha Patidhanam Bhava Nibyo Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadar Sri Vasati Gauda Bhakta Binda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna. My sincere gratitude to all assembled devotees. Today, we are reading from Canto 11 of the Srimad Bhagavatam, Chapter 23, entitled The Song of the Avanti Brahman, Texts 20 through 23. Lord Krishna is personally telling this story to his to his intimate beloved friend Uddhav. Many of us have just come from Vrindavan wherein there was discussion about the intimacy of the relationship between Krishna and Uddhav. Mm -hmm. 
similar to the intimacy, intimacy of the relationship between Krishna and Arjuna. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna tells Arjuna, you can understand this knowledge because you have no envy and because you are my friend. These two qualifications are very important. In fact, they're so important that we'll never understand true knowledge unless we adopt this character. To be without envy is, throughout our Vaishnav literatures, a most prominent teaching. It's not a detail. Again and again, we find the consequences of people who are envious and the mercy and the grace and the shelter that is received by those who are not. To be a friend of the Lord, there's various levels of being a friend. In Arjuna's case, he's simply an intimate associate in every way. They were cousin brothers, similarly with Uddhava. And both Uddhava and Arjuna, their friendship was speaking to the Lord intimately, walking with the Lord, discussing all matters with the Lord. Krishna was willing to, to be Arjuna's chariot driver. And in Uddhava's case, Krishna was willing to give Uddhava his chariot. So their friendship was based on something very deep of relationship of love. But when we're speaking to people who are like us, what does Krishna mean by being a friend? Sumritam Sarva Bhutanam. Krishna is the best ever well wishing friend of all living entities. To have faith in that and to reciprocate. A friend is faithful. A true friend in this world as we know it, is someone who's faithful, someone who's loyal to the relationship, and someone in good or hard times is there for us. So are we faithful to Krishna? Are we loyal to Krishna in good or hard times? Are we ready to engage to continue our devotional service. Srila Prabhupada would sign his letters, your ever well-wisher. Such a friend. Not just according to circumstances, but forever, unconditionally. Suradam Sarva Bhutanam. That's Krishna. He's our ever well-wisher. He resides within the heart of every living being and never leaves us. Always waiting. Like the Upanishad describes the bir two birds in a tree. However reckless and crazy and distracted the little bird is, the Paramatma bird is always just waiting. Whatever the little bird does, nothing could be too much. The Paramatma bird is still waiting. What type of friend is that? That's Krishna. When Srila Prabhupada signed your ever well-wisher as representative of Krishna, as one who surrendered completely like a puppet in his poetry, he wrote, I'm a puppet of Krishna. 
That was his prayer. Unconditionally forever, our well-wisher, that's friend. So for us to be friends is to reciprocate. Whatever our health, whatever people do, whatever the circumstance, will we be faithful and loyal to reciprocate, to chant the required number of rounds every day, to follow these divine principles, to put the the will of our gurus as the most prominent focus of our life. How we deal with each other. Our very life. To be a friend. It means we're really trying to follow. Loyally, faithfully. And if we have these two qualifications, which are characteristics of the basic principle of sincerity, then Krishna will help us in every situation. Srila Prabhupada would tell us, just he would plead with us, just be sincere. He cites Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that pure devotional service is very rare. Krishna gives himself to one who has pure devotional service. Although it's very rare, Krishna gives it easily to one who is serious, sincere, and has no ulterior motives. It is through that cultivation of consciousness that we can access Krishna's mercy. Krishna consciousness can only be properly understood, or realized, experienced when Krishna gives his mercy. It can't be understood just by intellectual prowess. It cannot be understood just by good deeds, or even by severe tapasya, but by Krishna's mercy. And Srimad Bhagavatam is telling, and our beloved acharyas are explaining what is required to receive that mercy. So as Krishna spoke to Arjuna, the Bhagavad Gita, his dear friend, and Dwarka Uddhava was the dearmost friend. So dear that Krishna sent him to Vrindavan with a message. Krishna was feeling so much love and separation from the Brijbasis knowing that they were in unbearable, inconceivable separation from him after Akrura took him away on a journey to Mathura. And he was, Krishna was supposed to come right back. That was what everyone agreed on and expected. But after the wrestling match in Krishna and Balaram liberated Mushtika, Janura, and Kam Kamsa, then Krishna and Balaram decided to stay in Mathura with Vasudeva and Devaki. And Sri Radha and Gopis, Sri Yashodamai and Gopis, all the gopas and gopis in Vrindavan were waiting, waiting. A moment was like 12 years or more. 
like a yuga. Just focus their eyesight on the horizon. It's waiting for some dust to be seen that was an indication that Krishna was returning. <clears throat> and then there was the dust. And then there was the visibility of some forms coming from that distant place of Mathura. And when they came closer, Krishna was not with them. And Nanda Maharaj, he was falling unconscious and crying and had to tell them, Krishna did not come back with us, he sent us alone. So what was their condition? When Krishna was in Vrindavan, we read that just the closing of eyes in an involuntary blinking, the Braja Gopis would, would criticize Lord Brahma for creating such imperfect eyes to see Krishna because it seemed like forever, even when Krishna was standing in front of them in his threefold bending form, smiling, glancing. So now he's gone farther than he's ever been away to another, it was like another country with no information when he will return. So Krishna sent Uddhava, and just to give the Brijavasi some sense of connection, he sent him in his own chariot, and even gave him his own dress and ornaments to wear. So, and he, as a cousin brother, he, he looked similar to Krishna in his own way. And Uddhava was thinking, I'm going to give them a good message and help them. But after he returned, he realized, Krishna sent me there just to learn from the gopas and the gopis, what is prema? I thought I had prema. And everyone in Dwarka thinks I have the best prema. But now I understand I have nothing compared to the gopis and the gopas, the bridge bhasis. Their love for Krishna in separation from him is like an ocean, limitless, shoreless ocean. <clears throat> and he, as he aspired to eternally serve them in the most humble way praying to be a blade of grass on the ground so they may step on his head. So this is how intimate Uddhava is to Krishna. He revealed the depths of the highest love to him. And now, just before Krishna is about to leave this world, <clears throat> can you imagine? Akrura took Krishna away from Vrindavan and how the gopis and gopas cried. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took that mood when he came, the highest love. Now Krishna is leaving Uddhava, who's learned from the gopis what love is. And Krishna's leaving the world altogether. He's bringing a conclusion to his pastimes. But before leaving, he's giving Uddhava these instructions the Uddhava Gita. How important they are to every devotee. 
And this particular chapter is most significant. It so much reveals to us through Krishna's words the qualities of a Vaishnava dealing with the situations of this material world. Because Krishna in the previous chapter is telling Uddhava how a devotee understands he's the eternal spirit soul, the Jivatma. And the Jivatma is the living force within the body and the mind. But when the spirit soul becomes bewildered, then the mind, which is meant to be focused on the purpose of life, the loving service of Krishna, the mind becomes attached to satisfying the body. And the mind through external satisfaction or pleasures sense gratification, selfishness, built on the foundation of the false ego. And in that situation, there's so much pain in this world. Even all pleasures inevitably lead to pain. And how difficult it is when people of this world are harsh, when people in this world are cruel to us. So Uddhava is asking, what do we do? <laughs> it seems like only a really great devotee can endure the pains of the insults of others. So Krishna is responding. And he tells in the early verses of this chapter <coughs> that arrows that repeatedly pierce through our chest and touch the heart cause great pain. But more than that pain is the harsh, cruel, insulting words of other people. And Krishna says, I want to tell you a story in this regard. In the province of Avanti Desh, there was a Brahmin. He had some training as Brahmin. He had some he had piety in previous life, in the early part of this life. And due to that piety, he became very prosperous. But he be, he was so caught up in the opportunities for wealth and prosperity, he became totally bewildered. He was obsessed, intoxicated by wealth and fame. And he worked so hard. He was not lazy. He was really enthusiastic working, working, working. And the more, because he was working so hard for everything he got, he considered it so valuable, he just would not part with it. Loba. Obsessed with greed. Because in this world, the more you get, the more you want. 
Krishna tells in Bhagavad Gita, trying to satisfy our material desires, whether it's through sex, whether it's through wealth, whether it's through fame, whatever it is. <coughs> it's like pouring petrol or oil on a fire. It just makes it more and more ferociously hungry. <clears throat> so he was completely obsessed in this way. And he was so greedy. He would work so hard. And whatever he got, he just wanted to keep. He wouldn't share it even with his own family members. He wouldn't even spend it for himself. He was extreme. And he lived his life like this. Now he's getting old. And his family members were very, very disgusted with him. And his friends were disgusted with him. But somehow or other they kept the connection because whatever they did get from him was what they would get. <clears throat> but what happened is his piety expired. <laughs> he used up all his previous pious activities. And out of desperation and anger and disgust, Somehow or other, his family members and relatives discovered the way to steal the money from him. And they did. His relatives stole from him. <clears throat> At the same time, soon after perhaps, thieves invaded his treasury and his property and stole large sums of his wealth. At the same time, he was an agriculturalist. There was droughts, there was floods, and it destroyed all his crops. In this way, he lost all of his wealth, everything. There was nothing left for him. And because of the way he treated people previously, nobody wanted anything to do with him. Every relative, every friend harshly rejected him. He had nothing and no one. And still, he was attached to it all. In his desperation, now he's homeless. He didn't know how to live homelessly. He was in a completely confused, disoriented, miserable state. And he meditated. He meditated on all the things that he had lost. And that meditation only caused him more grief. In that state, Similar to Gajendra in the Srimad Bhagavatam. In that state of complete desperation, helpless suffering. And in his case, a total state of being abandoned by everyone and everything, it seemed. This seed 
of his that was completely forgotten and lost within his memory of his heart was awakened. <coughs> the shelter of the Supreme Lord who is seated within everyone's heart. He had nowhere else to turn. And in that state, he offered beautiful prayers. Sometimes it's called the, the Bhikshu Gita. He prayed that in actuality, these people who have harmed me and all the circumstances that have caused me misery are not the cause. The real cause is my mind. Because my mind is identifying with this material body and being influenced by the modes of nature When the mind identifies with the body, then the body is interacting with the three modes of nature, goodness, passion, and ignorance. And according to how we respond, according to how the mind chooses to respond to the modes of nature, we become affected, influenced by those modes of nature. And then we acquire a particular nature. And then we live according to that nature. And it becomes perpetuated. Almost endlessly. The only shelter is the Supreme Lord who is seated within our heart. He came to this realization. And at that time, he became a sannyasi. And he considered everything that happened is the great mercy of the Lord. Because Krishna, because Mukunda, Paramatma, Krishna within my heart is kind to me. He's allowed everything to be taken away. This Brahman from Avanti Desh came to the conclusion all my sufferings are due to my own previous activities. I can't blame anything for anyone. But how wonderful that Krishna is still there, always there to give me shelter in any situation. The example is given in the tikas, the commentaries, that his conclusion was, if you bite your tongue, who are you going to blame for the pain? Now most people don't intentionally bite their tongue. But sometimes we do it. Please raise your hand if ever in your life you have felt the pain of biting your tongue. <laughs> so it's, so it's quite universal. <laughs> the acharyas give us analogies that we can actually really identify personally with. So if you bite your tongue, are you going to blame your husband? <laughs> or are you going to blame your wife? Or are you going to blame your parents or your children? Are you going to blame, blame um, the government? <laughs> Congress or BJP or Sheep <laughs> Sayon?
Are you going to blame the demigods? <laughs> Can't really blame anyone because you did it yourself, whether it was an intentional or unintentional. So similarly, the troubles and difficulties in this world that come to us, this is such an important teaching. In fact, Srila Prabhupada gave great prominence to the prayer of Brahma. Tate nukam pam susamikshamano punjana evat nukritam vipaka. What is the quality of a person who's fit for liberation? One who, even in the most difficult situations, considers this is my karma, this is my destiny, and in that situation fully take shelter of Krishna. Sharanagati. Fully take shelter of Krishna. Rupa, Srila Rupa Goswami tells us one of the symptoms of surrender is that Krishna is my only shelter. There is no other shelter than Krishna. And Krishna is so merciful, he appears in his holy names to give us shelter. He appears in the beautiful forms of Sri Radha Gopinath, the Archimurti in the temple, to give us shelter. Appears within the hearts of the Vaishnavas, the devotees, to give us shelter appears within the opportunity of devotional service itself to give us shelter. So Krishna gives a devotee the opportunity to find shelter in any situation, always, in life and even at the time of death. We're never without Krishna. Bhante Brahman became a sannyasi. And now he had nowhere to live. He had nothing of his own. All he had was his devotion to Krishna and his gratitude. He was feeling this is the best. <laughs> Doesn't get any better than this. I have nothing but Krishna. So you think someone who surrenders like this, everything becomes very, the whole world starts showering flowers on you. <laughs> Sometimes it seems like that. But in his case, after he surrendered his whole life, everything, the only way to maintain his body in his very old age was to go house to house begging. And almost everyone that saw him abused him. This chapter will go on to tell them incredibly intimate details of what they did to him. <clears throat> they would insult him with the harshest words of criticism and blasphemy. They would accuse him. He's a thief! Punish him. Sometimes they would put him in chains like a captured wild animal because they accused him of doing thievery and all sorts of other crimes. Sometimes they would beat him with sticks. hurl stones on him. Sometimes after being, after starving with no money, nobody would, he would go to ask something and they would just beat him and insult him. And, and he'd get a little food and he'd be sitting alone and people would come according to Srimad Bhagavatam and they would beat him and pass urine in his food and spit on him. And he was so happy. 
because he was taking shelter of Krishna. This story is so important. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, at one of the most important leelas of his life, he personally worshipped this story. May I tell you? Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, it was the time for him to take sannyas. <clears throat> On one level, he was taking sannyas so that he can reach a larger segment of the society with Krishna consciousness. As a householder, the son of Sachi, the beloved husband of Vishnu Priya Devi, who was surrounded by his most intimate loving friends like Srivas, Advaita Prabhu, Gadadhar Prabhu, Nityananda Prabhu, Haridas Thakur was there, Pundarik Vidyanidhi, Purimanta Khan, Murari Gupta, Kolavecha Sridhar, Mukunda Dutt, Vasudev Dutt, or Vasudev Ghosh, Vasudev Dutt. All of these great devotees were with Lord Chaitanya practically throughout the day and throughout the night. Just having Hari Kata, Hari Seva, and Hari Nam Sankirtan. He had already come back from Gaya and was in the intoxicated state of Sri Radha's love for Sri Krishna. And he was sharing that love and interacting with his eternal associates from Goloka Vrindavan who had appeared in so many incarnations as his most intimate loving friends. Shiva Sangam was non different than the Ras Mandala, the place of the Ras Lila of, of Vrindavan. And after that great pastime of the Harinam Sankirtan procession with millions of people to the house of Chan Kazi. Practically all of Navadweep was devotees. Lord Chaitanya said, I have come to bring a great rainstorm of love of God through the chanting of the holy names to flood the world. So to, to leave Navadweep and reach a broader sector of society, he accepted sannyas. And also eventually this Leela was to, to profoundly deepen to limitless degrees the ecstasy of, of of Sri Radha's love and separation from Krishna at the Gambira. So when Mahaprabhu took sannyas at Katwa, it was a very, very great transcendentally historic moment. He was given the name Sri Krishna Chaitanya by Keshav Bharati Maharaj. He was given a danda. His head had just been shaven. It was just at the very end of his 24th year of age, during the waxing moon, the month of Mag. And after taking sannyas, he called out, I will go to Brindavan to meditate on Krishna. 
His aim was to go to Vrindavan in a solitary place to meditate on Krishna, to completely absorb himself in Krishna and Krishna's names and Krishna's leelas and Krishna's beautiful form. And in that state, in a very spiritually intoxicated mood, he began to wander through the forest. Keshe Bharati Maharaj and all the people of Katwa that decided, we'll go with you. And for some time they did, but then Lord Chaitanya sent them away. Back, go back to your homes. And for three days, Lord Chaitanya wandered in the province called Radhadesh, an area where the Ganga does not flow. And it was in that state that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally recited this verse. And Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami gives great prominence to this verse. It's a verse within the prayers of the Avanti Brahman. Etam sa astaya paratmanishtam madhyashitam puravatam mayar mahadhi aham tarishyami toranta param tamo mukundangri nisevayayava I shall cross over the insurmountable ocean of nescience by being firmly fixed in the service of the lotus feet of Mukunda Krishna. This was approved by the previous acharyas who were fixed in firm devotion to the Lord Paramatma the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This particular verse from that time is meditated upon every day by those who are given sannyas within our Guru Parampara. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, just after taking sannyas, in his intoxicated state of going to Vrindavan, he took shelter of this verse, which is in the context of the story that we just told. The essence of life is taking shelter of Mukunda through loving service. And he's speaking here how one must be fixed in firm devotion. This Drita Vrata determination is very essential to make proper progress in Krishna consciousness. Krishna tells in Bhagavad Gita, Chatur Varna Mayastrastam Guna Karma Vibhagasha, that according to one's nature, one's qualities, and one's actions, one has a particular role in the Varnashram system. Brahmachari, Grihasta, Vanaprast, Sanyas. Brahman, Kratchya, Vaishya, Shudra. So it is taught to us that according to our particular role in the social system or in the spiritual system, we must perform our duties. Now, Whatever our nature is, we may have the nature of a grihasta, we may have a nature that's very suitable to a brahmachari, we may have a nature suitable to sannyas 
or Vanaprast or Brahman or whatever. According to our nature, it makes it very suitable and harmonious. But still, you can't make progress just because we're flowing along with our nature and what we like to do and how we like to do it because it's by nature. What is being spoken here and in the purports of our acharyas is there must be determination. Paratmanishta. There must be firm, fixed determination to take shelter of the Lord. To be faithful to the will of the Lord. Vyavashayat makabudhir eke hakudunandana bahushaka hinanta shabudhaya vyavashayana. Krishna speaks about how we must perform our duty according to our nature, but he's also telling that those who are on this path, the path of pure devotional service, those who are on this path, they are resolute in purpose, their aim is one. The minds of those who are, uh, and the intelligence of those who are ever irresolute is many branched. And Srila Prabhupada would quote Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur that um, this means one must make the order of the spiritual master one's life and soul. So this type of determination is how we make spiritual advancement as a brahmachari, as a grihasta, as a vanaprasta, as a sannyasi as a Brahman Kshatriya Vaishya Shudra or anything else. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he's remembering the Savanti Brahman. And what is inseparable quality to taking shelter of the Lord with determination? very much emphasized by Lord Chaitanya and it's so interwoven in this story. Trinadapi sunichena taror ibasi hishnuna amani namanadena kirtaniya sada hari To be more humble than a blade of grass more tolerant than a tree, which means forgiving like a tree. Eager to offer all respect to others and to not demand respect for oneself. These were the qualities that the Avanti the, this great personality from Avanti Desh developed. Even though he was being insulted and abused in ways that were so extremely painful to the mind, he took it all as an opportunity to take deeper and deeper shelter of Mukunda, Krishna. And by doing that, he was actually able to offer all respect to all living beings. He was beyond friends, beyond enemies, because he was taking shelter of Krishna. It sounds impossible. And sometimes it seems the more years we practice Krishna consciousness, the more impossible it seems. <laughs> when we're new devotees, sometimes we think, yes, yes, I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm going I'm to offer all respect to all living entities and I'm going to see everyone is with, with the Paramatma in their hearts and I'm going to be free from, from pleasure and pain and honor and dishonor and happiness and distress and and, and, and health and disease. It's 
very soon I'll be like that. <laughs> but as we practice for a while and we, and we actually make spiritual advancement, we realized how exalted that state really is. And at a certain point, we really come to a conclusion, this is just impossible. <laughs> for me, but not for Krishna. And then, Trinadapi Sunichi. Then we become so humble, I'm, I'm nothing, Krishna, please save me. When Draupadi thought that she could save herself, when Gajendra thought that he could save himself, when the Avanti Brahman thought that he could somehow or other sort things out, you know, get a good accountant. And <laughs> but when they were in a totally helpless state for nothing and no one could help them, what was impossible, then Shadarnagati. Then they took shelter. So whether we're suffering or not suffering, we understand this principle to cultivate the determination to keep Krishna in the center of our life and to take shelter of Krishna. To have a determination to honor the principle of Trinada Pisunichi. Humility, forgiveness, tolerance. In this state, when we truly take shelter with our heart, Krishna is there. Sarva dharman purityasya mam ekam sharanam braja aham tvam sarva papi vyo moksha isha me Krishna tells, abandon all varieties of dharma and just surrender to me. I shall protect you from all sinful reactions. Do not fear. And the way it's translated, it just sounds so easy. <laughs> just abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender to me. Sounds, sounds so nice. <laughs> Just abandon, just walk away from it. <laughs> just walk away from my lust and my envy and my anger and my greed and my arrogance and walk away from all the people who hate me and walk away from all the people who love me and walk away from all the people who, uh, all the things. Of, just walk away from it all and surrender to Krishna so nice. But those attachments are so deeply rooted in our hearts. We can't just walk away from them. But if we surrender to Krishna, take shelter of Krishna. And it begins by, by, by pleasing Krishna. Krishna doesn't even give us the power to remember him unless it's his will. Saravasya chaho maridishani vishto. completely dependent on Krishna at every moment to recognize that. And every living being is completely dependent on Krishna at every moment. And Krishna's in everyone's heart. And Krishna's forever my friend, best well-wishing friend in my heart. When we really focus our attention on that truth, then we could be happy in every situation because we're in Krishna's shelter in every situation. Krishna has appeared in this world, in this age of Kali, especially in his holy names, to give us shelter as a focus at any time, in any place where we can take shelter of Krishna personally, as the Supreme Person who's within our hearts, there's a tangible way that we could connect with Him, remember Him, find shelter in Him, 
in his holy names. Param Vijayate Shri Krishna Sankirtan. The Avanti Brahman is given by an, as an example by Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami and especially by Krishna here in this chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam of how to deal with situations of dealing with people who are trying to hurt us. people who insult us, people who blaspheme us, people who criticize us, people who accuse us of things we never did. These are just realities of this world. And it, it's, such a, it's such a history within Vaishnavas throughout the ages, through all religions. So this story is Krishna's explanation of how we're supposed to understand it and process it. There's no enemies in this world. In a very simplistic way, whatever happens, it's just like biting our own tongues. <laughs> to stop blaming people. It's blaming people, criticizing people, whether it's true or not, externally, it doesn't help us. What helps us is, Krishna, whatever's happening, I'll take responsibility. I'm yours, I take shelter of you. Takur Bhakti Vinod, Marobi Rakobi. Krishna, if you want, you can kill me. Or if you want, you could protect me. I'm yours. I'm your servant unconditionally forever. That's the spirit of this beautiful verse. And that's the wonderful blessing of this story from Srimad Bhagavatam. Krishna is our only shelter. And our whole life through being in the association of devotees who keep us focused on this, having a sadhana that keeps us focused on this, living our life with the character where we're completely focused on this. And it's very interesting how it's explained. Grihastas, who are greedy like he was, that's very adharma. But part of taking shelter of Krishna completely as a grihasta is the mood of service. Yes, work hard. You could work as hard as he, as the Avanti Brahman did for, for wealth. But his problem was not that he was working hard only. It's that he was just so attached to keeping it to for himself so much he couldn't even enjoy it himself. But in a spiritually focused way to share it with our family, to share it with the great sages and rishis, to share it with the devatas, <laughs> to share it with the people in general, to use it in a, in a, in a, in a favorable way for ourselves. That's a means by which we actually are in a state of consciousness where we can take full shelter of Krishna. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur is explaining here, this is the very purpose of human life. The rare durlabhamana of a janma, the rare purpose of human life, is we have an opportunity to fully humble ourselves and take shelter of Krishna 
and realize Krishna's presence in every living entity and serve with devotion and with love. Thank you very much. Is there any questions? <laughs> Please. Every time Ananda Vrindavan Prabhu asks a question, it's like the first time he ever asked a question. <laughs> it's ever new. Yes, please. Maharaj, uh, very nice class. Uh, there are two points which I want some clarity because you are not going to come. So I thought I have two questions. Please forgive me. Hmm? I have two questions, Maharaj. The first question which yes. you made it very clear. One at a time, please. <laughs> the first thing which you made it very clear that when we are telling to Krishna that Krishna, I surrender everything. But then after fun, some point of time you understand it is not so easy. It's giving everything and all our anarthas and everything that is not going to go so easily and a stage comes in our life we understand we are absolutely helpless we are absolutely hopeless we don't have any other shelter we cannot do it anything by our own and a stage comes and we tell to Krishna I am absolutely helpless and hopeless without your shelter I cannot do anything this stage comes and when you go in front of Krishna and say Krishna please take care of me now I understood what I, my situation is. But then the second stage starts, Maharajis, is that, that uh, we go on praying to Krishna, but Krishna doesn't reciprocate. Krishna just watches us and uh, just laughing there, but no action is taking, means nothing is coming out from our anarthas are not going, although we go on praying to Krishna. That stage is really very, very complicated because nothing is working out. On one side we are praying to Krishna, we are expressing ourselves that we are helpless, nothing is working out, yet the result is not coming. At that time we feel it, now what more I can do for Krishna now to get some relief from this mess which I have created in this material world. So in that situation, what is the strategy that we have to adopt to maintain our Krishna consciousness? We can see how wonderfully Krishna is reciprocating with you. <clears throat> because that is reciprocation. Krishna is reciprocating. And we're coming to deeper understandings of how much we need him. And the solution is Trinadabhi Suni Chena Tharor Iba Sehishnuna Amani Namana Dena Kirtaniya Sadahari With determination to continue following a life that's pleasing to our Gurus and Krishna. We remain steady like that. We live with the character of a Vaishnava. We guard against the offenses of the holy name, especially criticizing others. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in one place in Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat, he said, if you do two things, I will bring you back to Godhead. Chant the holy names always and do not criticize others. So we have to be very careful. We're really trying to take shelter of the holy name. We're not making offenses to Vaishnavas. And at the same time, Krishna reciprocates 
by giving us a real understanding like Draupadi, like Gajendra, like the Avanti Brahman, like Arjuna in certain situations, like the residents of Vrindavan so many times, that only Krishna could save me. When the forest fire went ablaze in Sri Vrindavan town, it was going to the sky, these flames on all four sides. It is explained that they, they look to Krishna like a dying man looks at a picture of the Supreme Personality of God. So most of us, if we started really feeling we were advanced, we would become terribly proud and think ourselves better than others. So Krishna keeps us thinking that we're very fallen. And those anartas are hard to give up. And they're still there. It's not just a mirage of anartas. They're real anartas for <laughs> that are in most of us. But just the fact that they're there, Krishna, only you could save me. Daivi heshu guna maya mama maya dharatyaya. Mame vame prabhadyate maya me tataranthite. These modes of nature are so strong, only if I take shelter of you. <clears throat> and Lord Chaitanya said, chant the holy names to take shelter of the Lord and keep this verse of Trinata be on our heart as we're chanting. Does that answer your question? Oh, well, I could ask a second question for us. <laughs> Please. Maharaj is talking about the Avanti Brahman. Uh, it's very clear that he was a very, on a very, very opulent situation. And even after that, everything went away in his life. And then he became very serious in devotional life. But this type of a thing doesn't come in our life. Normally, everything goes all right. We planned everything in our life. And then we become, then we understand now my stage has come in one prastha life. And now I have to take my focus into Krishna consciousness. This is normally it goes for every bin. This type of Avanti's Maraman's case is very rare, Maharaj, that everything goes away and you become very serious in devotional life. Now the problem that comes up with Maharaj, that most of the time I have seen it in my life and many other devotees also to whom I counsel for finances. We plan for devotees, we make them everything comfortable and we make him understand that you, you, you planned it, you, now your spiritual life is, your material life is over, means it is everything is settled. Now you have to completely become focused in your Krishna consciousness very seriously. But the major problem that comes is, although the devotee has given his whole life into Krishna consciousness, when everything becomes very, very stable, everything, that, the returns are coming, every day, monthly um, income are coming, family responsibilities are over, he has no, exactly no problems in that. He doesn't become serious in devotional life. On the contrary, he becomes relaxed in devotional life. He becomes very, so to say, a lukewarm type of a person who doesn't take it that desperation that I want to finish it now. Now, now there is only few days, a few years are there in my life. I want to finish my business. That thing doesn't come up with all those facilities. In fact, they become more lukewarm rather than becoming more focused and committed and desperate for Krishna consciousness. At that time, what is the thing that is required to push up that person or for ourselves also to see that the focus doesn't get disturbed because this, all those facilities is a trap of Maya to us because that way he's taking it away from devotional life rather than becoming more focused in devotional life. So what to do in this situation when first of all we have to plan to see that we get retired at right time and all the money and everything has been planned. But that is not helping our Krishna consciousness. On the contrary, that is taking away from Krishna consciousness. So what is to be done in this situation? <laughs> in this prayer of Avanti <clears throat> Brahman, <clears throat> he's telling how he is taking shelter of 
the lotus feet of Mukunda. How? By following in the footsteps of the previous great devotees. Mahajano Yenagadasa Bandha. By following in footsteps of great souls, that's the path of true devotional service. We know death will come with all certainty. When it comes, nobody knows for sure. Parikshit knew for sure, but most of us don't. But it will come. And death of our loved ones is inevitable. And the dissolution of all of our material attachments is inevitable today or tomorrow by the power of time. So, by association and hearing and chanting, we are conscious of these facts. But as devotees, we're trying to help each other. When Srila Prabhupada would say, I hope this letter meets you in good health, he wanted his devotees to be happy and in good health. It's not that we wish people bad health. We're trying to help each other in every way. That's what Vaishnav society is. So if things are going well for a while, as you just so graphically and enthusiastically described how things could go well for a devotee, in that state, we follow in the footsteps of the great souls. We hear these stories. It's not that the story of Gajendra or the story of Draupadi or the story of Prahlad or the story of Dhruva or the story of the residents of Vrindavan or the story of, of the, the bhikkhu of Avantidesh. It's not it's for people who are just suffering miserably. It's for everyone. We hear, even if we're millionaires, even if we're billionaires, even if we have loving family and loving community and everything's just going so nice and the temperature's really good. <laughs> Even if everything's good, we remember these stories, we hear these stories, and it gives us a focus that my only shelter is Krishna. Queen Kunti prayed, Jan Maishwarya Shruti Shribir, that the greatest disqualifications is when we develop a false pride due to being wealthy or having a high birth or position, <clears throat> having high education, being famous, all these things. They're disqualifications if they make us proud and distract us. Akinshina Gochara. Krishna, you're only accessible to those who are Akinshina who consider nothing is mine. Now King Yudhisthira, when he was in the forest with nothing, he was a Kinchana. He realized nothing is mine. And when he became the king of Hastinapur and all of Bharat Varsha, he was still a Kinchana Gotra. Because he understood nothing is mine. Everything is for Krishna. And if we get into this illusion that Janasya Mohoya Mahamameti, that I am this body and all these things in relation to the body are mine, we, we learn by hearing. If we don't learn by hearing, we probably won't even learn by experience. You could be very comfortable materially and hear these beautiful stories from Srimad Bhagavatam and realize 
actually nothing is mine. And if I think everything is mine, this is what my destiny is going to be to suffer like this. But if I understand nothing is mine, even in the most prosperous, successful situation, I, and everything belongs to Krishna, and I'm taking shelter of Krishna, and how am I taking shelter of Krishna? By using everything in Krishna's service, then we are a Kinchina Gocharam. We are following in the footsteps of the previous Acharyas. Because there's so many people in this world who are really suffering and have lost everything, and all they're doing is suffering and lost everything. They're making no spiritual progress. And there's people who are like that, who are finding the highest perfection in life. And there's people who have wealth and comforts, and they're making no spiritual progress. They're just implicating themselves in more and more karmas. And there's those who have wealth and comforts who are using everything as a caretaker of Krishna's property in the loving service of Krishna, taking shelter of Krishna, associating with Krishna's devotees, and those devotees are on the express path back to the spiritual world of Goloka. But it's important to see through the eyes of the scriptures. If we're hearing these stories, if we're, under, if we're actually taking them seriously and applying them to our lives, then there's no danger of fame and success and wealth. But when we get these things, we should understand how dangerous they are unless we use, we, we, are, akin, we are developing the quality of a kinshina gocharam. Krishna is a kinshina gocharam. He gives shelter to those who, Krishna, I'm yours. Little Prahlad was like that when he was being thrown in fire. And he was like that when he was the king. Yes? Dhruva Maharaj was like that when he was living in a forest. And he was like that when he was a king. In Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Leela and Navadweep, Kalavetra Srira was very, very poor, but he was hap the happiest person in the universe because he was taking shelter of Krishna and chanting his names and associating with his devotees. And nothing is mine. Everything is for you, Krishna. And then there was Buddhimanta Khan, Pundarik, Vidyanidhi. They were extremely wealthy, prosperous, popular people. And they had the same treasure of love of God as Kolavich Sridhar. There was no difference. When Gadadhar Pandit went with Mukunda Dutt to see Pundarik Vidyanidhi, and he saw him with very lavish, elegant clothing and beautiful um, <clears throat> um, decorations on his bed. and all kinds of sweet perfumes. <laughs> he was chewing all these delicate, elegant spices. Gadadha Pandit's a simple brahmachari. He was thinking, how, why Mukunda Dutt? He didn't say anything, he just thought, why Mukunda Dutt has brought me to this materialistic person? So much comforts. He had more comforts than any of your clients. <laughs> Mukunda Dutch understood and he began to sing a song about Krishna, a song that, a, a verse spoken by Uddhava <laughs> from the Srimad Bhagavatam in praise of Krishna's mercy. <coughs> and Pundarik Vidyanidhi, he, ex he manifested such genuine ecstatic love. 
Gadadhar Pandit, who was a total renunciate, the most renounced person in the world. He became a disciple of Pundarik Vidyanidhi. And it doesn't say in that sense that Pundarik Vidyanidhi at that point, you know, gave up everything. He, he remained the same. He remained the same in the sense that he had all those luxuries and everything, but he was totally focused in loving service to Krishna. He was more humble than a blade of grass. He understood everything belongs to Krishna. Does that answer your question? So it's very important we become absorbed in actually understanding these stories and following in the footsteps of these stories. And then whether it's a sh sunny day and we're comfortable or whether it's a stormy day and everything is going wrong and we're losing stuff, either one, we have Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki Thank you very much.